young children. Man, it's been so crazy around here. With all the plagues going on. Wow. And Pharaoh is just so stubborn. I mean, God keeps showing his awesome power. Right? Do you remember all the plagues? It was so crazy. The darkness. And what else did we have? Frogs. And the hail. And the locusts. And the... Oh, my goodness. It was so many things. And, oh. You know, Moses keeps talking about us leaving Egypt. And, you know, I really don't like being a slave, right? Do you guys like being a slave? Oh, it's terrible, but I kind of like it here in Egypt. I don't know that I want to leave. I mean, you know, I have a nice house. And we have food. And I, I just don't know about this idea of leaving Egypt. Maybe we could stay here and just not be slaves anymore. I don't know. And now, my husband went. Moses called all the men to have another meeting. And I don't know what they're going to talk about. I wonder if there's another plague coming. Do you think that could be it? I wonder what's going to happen. Timna! <sighs> Timna! Yeah. Timna, hurry up. Hurry up. We have much to do. Much to do. Moses gave us some instructions. Ah, okay. Listen, listen, listen. I'll tell you everything we got to do. Um, um, listen. Okay. First of all, he said we have to get a lamb. And, and then we have to kill that lamb. And then we're going to have to take the blood from the lamb. We have to paint it on the outside of the house, right over here, on the mantle, uh, and on the doorpost. And then after that, we have a special meal that we have to make, and we got to eat it. But we got to do that while we're all dressed and ready to go. And, and did you pack? What? You haven't packed? What? What? Timna, we've been saying for weeks now, God is going to set us free to get out of here. We're going to be getting out of Egypt. You haven't packed? Well, I was hoping we would want to stay here. I mean. Okay, listen, the point is, we need to hurry up, because if we don't get all this done, the angel of death is coming. Did you say a lamp? Yes, but did you not hear me about the angel of death? Yes. Listen, the angel of death is coming, and we've got to hurry up and get ready, so that the angel of death will pass us over, and he won't kill the firstborn son. The firstborn son. Do you know who's the firstborn son in this house? That's me. Hello. Firstborn son? Yes, I was the oldest of my parents' children. I'm a firstborn son. So we got to hurry up and get this done. Plus our own children, of course. We don't want our oldest children to die either, do we? All right, so come on. Come on, come on. We have to do this. And put the lamb down. Wait. You're not going to kill this lamb, are you? This is my special lamb. He's okay, so Timna, listen. I'm really sorry to tell you this, okay? But what God wants us to do is to pick a lamb to sacrifice, and that lamb has to be perfect. Like, yeah, but nothing wrong with it. Lambs. Well, that's my point. Is He's this. So innocent. But is he perfect? Like, is he the best lamb we have? He is, but he's so cute. Then that's the one God wants us to pick. God said we have to pick the one that is the best, the most perfect, because it shows that it's innocent. It shows that it's cute, that we love it so much, but yet that's the one that has to be sacrificed. Don't you remember? That's why even all the way back after Adam and Eve sinned, that's what they had to do. They had to pick the one that was most perfect every time, the sacrifice. Aww. Look, I'm sorry, Timna. I know you love this little, uh, whatever you named him again, but you need, to, you need to do this. We need to do this. This is really important. We don't have a lot of time. Come on, let's get inside the house. We'll take care of the lamb and, and we'll bring we'll bring the blood back out here to paint on the post. You kids just wait right here. <clears throat> I'm so sorry we had to just hurry up and kill him that way, but that's just what we had to do, Tim. Now, okay? So now, listen. I've got the I've got the blood of the lamb. I collected some in here, and 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 so now we have to paint it. Paint it all over here on, on the doorpost. I don't want blood on my house. Why not? That's blood. It's yucky and bloody. And... But but this is what God said we have to do. And 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 Tim, no, this is not going to be our house much longer. We're going to be getting out of here tonight. Right. We have to leave it all behind. And 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 God said this is the only way because because when the angel of death comes, the angel of death is going to be coming over all of the country, and it's going to be checking every single door. Not just our doors, the Egyptians' doors, every door. And if it finds the blood of an innocent lamb painted on the doorpost, it's going to pass the house by. Is it like some magical symbol? Like, yeah, you know, like, what's his name? Jambres the sorcerer or whatever that? He, he always had these 
symbols and signs no. and they doing these magic tricks? No, okay, like yes, yes. Magic I know you've been, you've been seeing Jambers, our neighbor, across the stream on the other side, outside of Goshen. And yes, you're right, that's the kind of stuff he likes to do. He claims that if you just have like, you know, the, the, have the right color clothing on, or maybe you have like the right, the right symbol carved on your house, then you'll be protected from evil. But that's not what this is. God isn't saying that, the, that this lamb itself is like something magical that's going to keep us from getting hurt. But it's the symbol of that we believe what he told us to do. And also, because, because you see, that lamb, they never did anything wrong, did it? No. It couldn't do anything wrong. It was innocent from anything wrong. But we've done wrong. I've done wrong. You've done wrong. We're all sinners. We've all done things that are not what God wants us to do. And so, this innocent lamb's blood shows that an innocent thing has to die for our sins. You know, I don't always get it exactly, Timna, but it's been like that ever since the beginning, ever since right after Adam and Eve sinned. Something innocent has to die just so that people who've done wrong things don't get the punishment, don't get the, the penalty of sin. So it's like the, the lamb gets, gets our penalty and get, gets... Yeah, it's like, it's like he, dies, he dies so that we don't have to die. I don't know. It has something to do with that Savior that, that God talked to them about. He, he, said, he, he said something about he would send someone, a Savior, to, to save them and, and to take the penalty. So, I don't know. I'm just going to put this on here. I hope it's going to be enough. I think so. It looks, looks pretty good. I'll put a little on this side just to be sure. I mean... Why do we have to do this now? I mean, yeah, at the beginning, the plagues, you know, we all got the first few plagues, but afterwards, it was just the Egyptians. We didn't have to do anything. We were just, you know, the Israelites. So, so God... Okay, wait, hang on a, hang on a second, Tim. So, so, I understand what you're saying. The first few plagues, like the blood, the water turning to blood and the frogs, that affected everybody. Yeah. The Egyptians and us. But then later on, it was only happening to the Egyptians. Right. And we were feeling pretty good, weren't we? Yeah. You'd see poor Jambres across the stream outside of Goshen, and he had flies in his house and lights in his house, and the darkness was right on his house and not in our place. But you know what? This is different because this is an opportunity that every single one of us has to just do and believe what God says. God is saying, just do this thing with the lamb, Carry out the symbol that you believe me, and then you won't have to die. It's like he wants everyone to, to be saved. It's like he, he doesn't want anyone to die unless they say, no, I refuse. I'm going to do it my own way. That doesn't count for the Egyptians, though, right? It does. He said, Are you serious? What? I just saw Jambres. Do you remember, you remember mean old Jambres, the yes. magician who was always like yelling at us and ordering us around? When he came over the stream into Goshen, and he went over to neighbor Aholiab's house, and he said, let me in. Your house has a lamb on it, the lamb's blood on it, and I don't want to die. I'm a firstborn son. I want to stay here. He believes in it now, too. And he let him in his house? He let him in his house. I can't believe it. It would count for him, too. I, I don't understand. It's like, it's like God, he's so powerful. And, and at first we thought that he was using his power to just beat up the Egyptians. And we're like, yeah, get those mean Egyptians. But it's like he really loves them, too. He cares about them, too. He wants them to be in his family. I don't get it. Tim, I don't know. But listen, we still have to do the meal, okay? okay. We have to do the meal. So listen, um, let's get inside the house. We need to have all the kids in the house with us, too. So let's, let's, let's move this aside, and that way we can all be in the house together. We'll make the house a little bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Tim, now we've got the food. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, here's what you need to know. We, we can't sit down to eat. Okay, that's I know, but we have to be ready to go. That's what that's what Moses was telling us. He said we have to be ready to go. We have to have our traveling clothes on. Well, our robes are ready. We've got to have our belts tied. We can't even take loosen our belts because we're gonna like get nice and full tummies and be all happy after we eat. We're gonna be standing up, eating with our clothes tied on, and even with my walking stick right here in my hand. And about our shoes, we never wear our shoes in the house. I know, I know. We need to have them on because we could be leaving at any moment, Timna. Really? Yes, that's how he wants us to be, ready to go at any moment. And then we're supposed to eat the food, and, and the food is, is very special too. It's only certain things he told us to eat. Here's the first part. Some bitter herbs? The bitter herbs. Usually we just have a little bit like on the side when we're eating things that are really sweet. But we need to have these. 
because it's, it's a symbol, Timna. It's going to remind us of something. And children, this is something that it's okay to put in your mouth if you want to. You can just kind of nibble a little piece of it off and taste it and see whether you think it tastes really good or not. Because the point of it is it's not supposed to taste really good. It's supposed to be kind of like sour or bitter. You can check it and see what it tastes like if you want to. You can put it on Or you can even you smell it if you want. Just smelling it might help you to know what it's like. Because see, Moses says that these bitter herbs are going to be reminders to us of the bitter time we had in Egypt. We've been slaves here, you guys. And being a slave is no fun. Being a slave is terrible, in fact. And so we're using this to remind us that Egypt was bad. Egypt was awful. And you know, someday, you don't have to, absolutely you don't. Someday, in a year, well, Moses says we'll celebrate this Passover again. He says we're going to do this every year. Really? Yes, because this is going to be it. Tonight is the night. We're going to get out of here. And after we get out of here, then we're going to still have a celebration every year to remember when God got us out of here, out of Egypt. It's free. So why is it called Passover? Because while we're doing this and the blood is on the outside of our house on the doorpost, we're waiting for the angel of death to pass over our house. Oh. He's going to skip us. Passover means like to be skipped, like to not be chosen to die. We're being allowed to live. Wow. So now the bitter herbs, they remind us that every year when we eat this, we're going to remember, oh, wow, that time in Egypt was just like these bitter herbs. It was nasty. We didn't like being there. Because, well, Timna, I know that sometimes you say you really like being here in Egypt. I know you don't like being a slave, just like I don't, but you still seem to think that Egypt is a nice place to just live. Like maybe if we could be free and living in Egypt, that everything would be okay. We have a pretty nice house and food. I know, but I think God wants us to know that he has something better in mind for us. And he doesn't want us to just settle for this place called Egypt. Better than Egypt? Better. And we've got to remember that every time we eat those bitter herbs, we'll go, yeah, Egypt really wasn't as good as what God wants for us. Okay, here's the next thing. The bread, but... I had you make it special, Timna. Yeah, Remember, no, no yeast? Yeah, no yeast. It's flat? No leaven, that's right. It didn't rise. Well, see, yeast usually is what we put into the bread to make it rise up, to get soft and chewy. And the thing is, that's how sin is, too. When you, when you want to put yeast into your bread, you don't put very much. You just take a little bit of yeast and put it in. And then that makes the bread rise up because that little bit of yeast goes all through the dough, and it affects all the parts of the bread. And then the whole bread gets risey and fluffy. But do you know what? That's how sin is, too. It doesn't take much sin to change us either, Timna. If we have just a little bit of sin in our lives, it starts to affect our choices, who we hang out with, what kind of things we do, the things we think about, and it changes our whole lives, just like the little bit of yeast can change the whole bread. So that's why we're eating the bread without yeast. Kind of like putting sin away from us before we get ready for this trip. That's right. That's right. We're saying we don't want any sin in us at all. Mm. And then the last was the lamb. Tim, we, we cooked with the lamb. The reason that we're supposed to eat it is because the lamb represents our Savior. Someday, there's going to be a Savior that comes and he's going to save us all, not just from Egypt, but from sin, Timna, from being bad people, from making bad choices. And he's the one who's going to give us life, real life. Not just, not just like being alive, like waking up in the morning and so on, but like, I don't know, something better, like, like what Adam and Eve were supposed to have. That's what, that's what Moses is saying, and that's what I believe, Timna. Do you believe it? Uh, I don't know. It kind of makes sense, but I don't know if I'm ready to leave. Oh, we have to be ready to leave, Timna, because this is it. This angel of death, this is going to be the final plague. After this, Pharaoh is going to let us go. This is the last plague? The very last. That's why we're packing and ready to go, because this time, we know for sure. This is it. Do you, so, do you hear that? I hear that. It sounds like somebody crying. And screaming. And wailing. Just, just horribly. And it, it, over from over there, too. And, and, and back that direction. There's, oh, there's people all around. But it doesn't sound from our neighbors. No, not, not a holy house, house across the street. They had put the paint on their house. On the, they had painted the blood on their house, but it's coming from the other, 
the people who live right behind us, I, I didn't see them putting the blood. Not just the Egyptians across the stream. There's a couple people of our neighbors right here who chose not to do it either. Because God said it would happen to everyone, Egyptian or Israelite. If they chose not to have the blood, well, this is so sad. It's so very sad. I, I feel really bad for them, but I'm so glad that we chose to believe. Me too. Is everything packed? Yeah. Okay. Are the kids ready? You kids ready? All right. Then we're going to have to get out of Egypt. I'll go make sure. Let's go make sure that our bags are ready, okay? Okay. All right. You wait here, kids. So, that's quite a story, right? Mass plagues before the children of Israel could leave Egypt, could leave slavery. It's pretty exciting. And who does the land represent? You guys know who the lamb represents? Jesus is right. He was reminding them that someday Jesus would come and he would die for us. And Jesus died what? On what? On the cross. On the cross. That's right. For us, his blood was, sh was shed for us. So that one day, if we believe, if we trust Jesus, we can go and live with him. Where? In heaven. Right? One day because of what Jesus did for us. So let's bow our heads real quick and say thank you so much to Jesus. That he was willing to die for us. And that we can live with him in heaven someday. Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, that you sent Jesus to die for us. That he shed his blood so that he could cleanse us from all our sin, Lord. And we pray that you help each of us to believe that every day and to give our hearts and our lives to you, Lord. We thank you that you passed over all the Hebrews who believed in you, and not only the Hebrews, but the Egyptians, because you love everybody, and you want everybody to be safe. We thank you so much for that.